Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. That was different and new. Saying it different, not not saying Toffee Blue for you like I did before. It's uh, yeah. Try let me. I'll, I'll get used to it one day. Uh, this is Jerry coming to you, recorded and not live from North Carolina in the states. Uh, with me today, I've got Terrence Terry. Yeah, whatever you want to call him, Terold. Uh, yeah, he's good. Tertiary. Uh, yeah, that works. Uh, Terry, uh, good to talk to you, man. Glad you're glad you're back. Thanks, man. Good to speak to you. Yeah. Uh, so we almost didn't make it. Uh, there's been all number of nonsense that has happened to keep us from recording this uh, this whole session. Uh, it's been frustrating. We've had. Windows laptop updates that have lasted hours. We've had uh, power outages in downtown Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Everything you can think of has held this back. What did you say about this particular pod, Terry? It was God about the universe or something? Yeah, the whole universe is trying to stop this pod from happening. So if it does go out, it's the pod that defied God. The pod that defied God. I think that should possibly just be the tagline for this <laughs> all the time. The pod that defied God. Let's get started. Watford Extra Time Show. Uh, 1-0 win. Everton brings brings home all three points. It's nice. Uh, one of those games, Terry, that i got to be honest, in the past, I feel like we blow that. Mm. Uh, I feel like we find a way to to draw there or we find a way to just collapse uh not a perfect not a perfect display from everton on saturday but i gotta be honest um i like i like a little a little non-wavering you know what i mean i like a little a little bit of uh sticking fast and finding a way to win um what what are your opening thoughts on on the the watford match on on saturday I mean, three points more than anything. Yeah, it's three points. It, it reminds me a lot of the games that, um, you know, in the middle bit of last season where we were terrible and we were losing a lot of games. It reminds me of one of those games. Only this time we had a good defence. Where it, in the middle chunk of last season the defence was really, really poor and you know conceding from set pieces. And if we play that game um, at that time last season, then we, we'd lose it rather than win. Whereas this time we got the goal and the only part of the team I'm really, you know, confident about in the sense of they've you know, they've hit the ground running for the season is the back five, you know, like the back for the the four defenders and the uh, the goalkeeper. Like the other players all across the pitch for, you know, varying reasons seem to be get, you know, getting into the season at um different you know, different speeds and some of them seem to be, you know, fitter than others and, you know, some of them seem to be, you know, clicking a little bit more, you know, with the with, with the players around them. Some of them, you know, obviously can't help that because they've been in international tournaments, so they're new to the club and all that. But the back uh, four and the goalkeeper, straight away, they've got into it. They've carried on the form that we saw in the um, run of games at the end of last season where we were, we were really good. They Those five individuals have carried that form into this season and this is when you want to, you know, it's 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 so important that when you're not playing well and you you know you're bedding in and you know you're looking to settle things down before the international break when uh, the play traditionally when everyone comes back from the first international break that's when the season really gets going. This early section before that, you want to be taking as many points as you can because it stands you in good stead for when everyone else gets their act together, and um, because we're going to need you know to be taking points off these these type of teams if we're going to improve yeah. on last season so terry in the past you've been really down on yeri mina uh are you eating a little humble pie on this one now yeah yeah <laughs> I, mean, I mean michael Keane, yeri mina i just i, I never get any the box right do i <laughs> I hope these people who are, you know, watching and listening for the first time, they're like, "Why didn't he like Gary Me?" Yeah, well, he loves him, and he's one of the people who was actually to be. To be fair, I wasn't naysaying Gary Me at any point. I was just worried about his fitness. Period. It's always been my big knock on Gary Me. stay healthy, and to be fair, he still hasn't done that yet. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, the thing that a lot of people's big knock on Yerry Mina for them was more it gives them a, gives them a heart attack when he's got the ball in possession in the back. 
that has been totally unfounded so far this season. Mm-hmm. He, he looks composed. He looks he looks really good, like man to man defending. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't realize his mobility was that good, being able to kind of you know lock down defenders like that. I I just I, you knew he was great at clearances because he's he's like eight feet tall. And he's got like a four foot vertical leap. So, of course, he should be able to clear the damn ball out, right? But uh, he's he's just a really smart defender. The way he crowds... Uh, the way he crowds somebody with with you know the the attacker with the ball enough if their backs to him to not foul them, he crowds them to make them uncomfortable mm-hmm. and kind of gets up on them. But he does not actually foul them. He's he's smart and the guy is snide. Mm. I love his snide, getting all up in, getting all up in, uh, getting all up in. Uh, yeah, uh, was it a uh, Jerry's? Jerry's face for uh, diving too easily. <laughs> my um, my brother-in-law actually texted me uh, after the game, going, "I love Jerry Mina. He must have he must have a um, ninety-nine aggression stat on FIFA because he's just <laughs> just square enough to everyone." Um, yeah, I just I great. mean Mina's Mina's start to show now why you know the club bought him and why they you know they chased him all last summer and spent a decent amount of money on him. Fit. He's got he's got all the tools physically. He's a good defender. Obviously, he still hasn't put a run of games together. There's still always that lurking sort of worry that he could you know get injured. Plus, people need. I hope, what I hope we don't do is what we do to sometimes sometimes some players build them up too much while things are going well because he will have a bad game. He will. He, he's at some point he's going to give a goal away or yeah. a penalty or something because he's a very you know very. Uh, Rash, um, some would say, defender. He's very, you know, takes chances, which you know, so far have been coming off for him. But he, you know, he's he's always got that bit of moments of madness in him that you can, that will creep up at some point. But it's just something we're gonna have to learn as fans in general, not just for me. And that you can't, you know, if you're gonna have a young team, which we are, you're gonna have to expect, you know, learning situations with them. They're gonna have inconsistencies. They're gonna have issues. But right now, Mina, Keane, Luca Dean. Uh, Coleman and Pickford, all of them have just been fantastic. They've been absolutely solid because, okay, you know, the, the Crystal Palace and Watford aren't, you know, free scoring super teams, but they've had, you know, very, you know, physical strikers up against them. They've had to deal with Troy Deeney, you know, Christian Benteke. These are, you know, players who are going to, you know, go to go to war with them and it's suited the, the two centre backs down to the ground. And we may see a little bit different when they come up against like smaller, you know, quicker centre forward to try and play a different game with them. We might see them struggle a little bit against them. But right now, can't knock them. They've been you know what I mean it's a two man of the match performances for me. Yeah. Um uh, Mina's getting all the attention. Michael Keane has has quietly been going out about his business, which is awesome. Um he's just kind of picked up where last season left off uh looks very solid looks good in a partnership with mina although i feel like there there's aspects which make them very similar um you you know seamus coleman has been doing all right he's been steady uh you can't say he's creating as many opportunities as luca dean is but he's getting forward some he's he's you know defending well on the flank he's doing all right luca dean's injury uh, is one of the worst things to come from the match, uh, and us having to throw in Holgate late to go in on the right and Coleman on and shift over to the left because Baines was not on the on the bench that day. Um, we still survived, still survived, still you know <laughs> kept the kept the butt cheeks together, <laughs> managed managed to kind of make sure it was all right. It was nice. Uh, but that's the big problem, and with a hamstring injury, you don't really anticipate him playing the next game. Uh, so Leighton Baines probably will will come back in, uh, and Coleman swing back over to the right. I think Baines, um, um, Baines is injured at the minute. I'm not sure how long for, but he's, he's that's why he wasn't on the bench. He's not available at the minute. Baines, no. Somebody, I, I just saw a story today where he's gonna he's supposed to come in and and play for him. So. I don't know. Is he is he still injured or? I don't know about still, but he was at the weekend. I mean, hopefully he's back for this game. But um, mm-hmm. I think Silver said though that I mean it's sad if it's got to this, but um, it, that Fabian Delph will be um, fit for this next. Oh yeah. So in a pinch, he could go in at left back or a header because I would rather see that than mm-hmm. than Coleman at left back and Holgate at right back if both the left backs. Yeah. Injured. Fabian Delph at the at left back is not the worst 
not the worst thing in the world. Um, we were talking about it when we were doing our squad depth analysis. Uh, I had forgotten that that is a possibility. And then it hit me. I'm like, oh, yeah, he played a lot for the friggin' league, league champions last season at that same position. Not the worst case in the world. So that may be possible, man. You may be right. I mean, I think you know? if either of the uh, the two left backs can can play, I think they will. Even if mm-hmm. it, even if they like, just pass a fitness test on the day, the same way that uh, Gomez did. But there's always, you know, Delph to make a debut because it's not. It, it is a auxiliary sort of left back, but you know, it could be a lot worse. He, it's not like he. Oh, he can play there. We'll put him there. He played there once. No, he's played there a lot. He played there at a high level. So I wouldn't be. I wouldn't like it, but I wouldn't be worried if we started with Delph at left back against Aston Villa. Right on. Uh, besides the you know Pickford and the and the back line, um, anybody else you feel uh, stood out? Because I mean I feel like you go man man of the match immediately you jump to the keeper in the back line because because they played they were so sound there was a miscommunication here or there but not that many did all right for the most part. Um, but the fact that we struggled to put together some opportunities or put together just in many opportunities at all, uh, it kind of makes you a little wary uh, as far as chances, creating chances down the down the line. Um, anybody you felt like performed well out of those, or was it mainly you're thinking more about the the ones who struggled? Um, I think Andre Gomez played well, considering he probably wasn't completely fit. I mean. It's so apparent now compared to when he went off um, against Crystal Palace. So when he was on the pitch for Crystal Palace and when he was on the pitch for Watford against Watford, compared to the spell that he wasn't on the pitch, he is the heart of the team. Like he is so important. Like he's the player that they all give the ball to. He's the engine of the team. He, the whole system relies on him because of his range of passing, and you know he, he's the uh, he's the ball to take the pressure off when the defence have got it. He's the Player, the other players in attack look to if they, you know, they run down a blind alley, they turn, they look where's Gomez, we'll give it to him, and he'll recycle the ball to another better attacking position. He, if I could make him, if I could wrap him in cotton wool between every game, I would because he's so important to how we play. So I think he played well. Um, seen him play better, but obviously you got to kind of, you know, factor in the fact that he wasn't completely fit because he'd only yeah. just made the game. Mm-hmm. As far as struggling, I my immediate jump is to Richarlison not really having... Mm. I just felt like he gave the ball away very cheaply and often. Um, you see that sometimes with Richarlison. You see it with Sigurdsson lately too. Kind of trying to take chances on quick passes and it's just like, you know, foot off here or there. And it allows the de- defender to, to get a hold of it. Uh, and just basically saying, here, guys, have the ball. Sigurdsson's done it a lot the first two matches. Uh, Richarlison definitely, definitely did it this game a lot. Um, so he's if I'm thinking of someone who just didn't have their best game, Richarlison, he also had a couple of guilt-edged chances with his noggin, and it, you know, put it over, got under both times, yeah. you know? So especially the last one. Mm. The last one, I mean, if I... I'm not saying I would have made it. I'm just saying if I think I could have made it, maybe there's a problem because he is 11 million times better than I am. <laughs> so, yeah, if I'm thinking, you know, I might have been able to nail that. No, that's a problem. All right. Um, and it's possible, you know, playing against his old team. I just don't. I just maybe think he just had an off day. And that's as, it's as easy as that. You know, uh, we, we put in Walcott for him. Which I know everybody was like, okay, <laughs> you know, we're like, yeah, we want him out, but Walcott, uh, sometimes he scores, and, and Walcott did all right. Yeah, he did all right. Well, you know, didn't really dazzle, but he did all right. Richarlison and, and uh, Iwobi have both been on international tournaments in the summer and come back to preseason really late. In fact, haven't had a preseason, so we're going to see Walcott, especially in these early weeks, because he's the one who's the most match fit. He he's had a full mm-hmm. preseason, so. You know, he's never going to throw a Wobi in ahead of Walcott at this point because you know a Wobi won't be ready, and Richarlison clearly isn't completely ready. But they, they'll get there. They, they're basically, 
you know, as a lot of players do now, international players at least, they're having their pre-season now. They're, they're sort of their pre-season friendly games, which all of the other players had to build up fitness. They're doing it in Premier League games, and there's just no way around it. The only yeah. only thing you can take from it is it's not just us. Everyone, everyone's got it. But you'll see um, other clubs who've got players who are away on international tournaments, especially ones who went to the final or. Mm-hmm. You know, won it or what have you, like Richardson did. Like that, uh, Nicholas Pepe. I think he's only come on as a substitute for Arsenal so far. Mm-hmm. And he, I think he didn't. I think he came back to training earlier than Richardson did. Uh, don't quote me on that. But if it's not earlier, it's around the same time. So we haven't obviously got the. Well, we don't feel like we have the luxury of of bringing Richardson off the bench every game. But I think in an ideal world, if we had everyone else fit, we would be doing that. Terry, you're so fair. You're so fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, Jerry, Richarlison looked like shit, but you know what? He's a human. He's a human being, says Terry. He's a man. <laughs> He's right. He hasn't had much of a preseason. I'm just pointing out he looked a little meh, all right? Because I expect, you know, Richarlison, man. I want pigeon dancing. Bring me my Richarlison, the normal one. <laughs> He'll be back soon enough. I'm not worried about it. It's just one of those things. That's the brilliance of having depth, you know? I do think... I, I th- I've, thought we may have seen a Wobi late had we not had to make that sub for Dean going out and bringing Holgate in. I thought maybe we would have seen a Wobi coming in for Sigurdsson in the last like five minutes, something like that, just to get him, you know, get him involved, you know, yeah. let him know, hey, you're part of things, you're part of the plan. Uh, that's what I expected. That was I was so excited for it too. Just the idea of being able to have another option at that position off the bench. I've been waiting for it for a long time. And then it just got... I, I was I was waiting the whole time and then... <laughs> went away. Luca Dean tweaks his hammy. Not cool. Mm. Um, so not a, not, a, not a dominant performance for us. Um, I think some people watch that game and they actually would say that it probably would have been more fair had it, the result been a draw. Um... I don't care. I do not care. Uh, the op- the opposition manager can can say they deserved the win as much as they want. That's fine. Uh, at the end of the day, our, our defense held, and our keeper made us made a save with his face. With his face. Yeah. That's nice. I like that. It's a shame, really, because he's so good looking, isn't he? So it's ruined it. He's fine. Yeah, remember he's normally in like dance halls with the with the strobe lights, so it doesn't really matter what people are looking like there. He's busy getting the rave on. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't care. Oh yeah, and he's another one who's getting super snide, and I love it. Mm. <laughs> I love him getting onto these guys. Flop Pereira, I think he got into per- him and Mina both got on Pereira, and I was like, good. Yeah. He flops there and he pretends like he's all hurt and then we get on him and then he Pereira jumps up and starts arguing with him. I'm like, yeah, why are you laying down? <laughs> we, we, missed, we missed that for so long. Just the, the, the yeah, excuse the language, the bastards in the team, the ones who, you know, who, 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 who want to fight one no matter what. Like we, we had that in in, um, in spades under Moyes and we, we lost it for a long time. But I think now we've got it back because... You see in preseason everything. Even Andre Gomez, he likes to get involved and love all that. Yeah. I, love, I love players who fight for each other and you know fight for the badge. Uh, forget Agreed. how you play, just who, who want to stick up for each other and and want to get involved with the other team. Love all that. Evertonians buy yeah. right into that, especially at Goodison. Yeah, and uh, that's something I've been looking for for a while. I'm mm. so excited to see that. Oh my gosh, just a little. I don't know. I feel like it's a little. Uh, chauvinistic to say having some cojones you know what I mean because you know women can be brave about that kind of stuff too but that's what people have said in the past <laughs> that's you know I, I think it really snide is the best is a good way to say it though snide is a good way to say it the fi- um, figurative cojones not literal yes yes it's <laughs> uh, so um, yeah gotta be this was uh not a, not a ton ton of action during the match. I will say this is the first match in my recent memory where one of my sons sat b- beside me the entire match, watched the entire thing from whistle to whistle, the full 90. Then it was sat down beside me watching the whole thing, and it was great. 
so great. I was like, finally, all this brainwashing is starting to pay off. Fantastic. Now I can actually celebrate with someone when we score, you know, and I'm not just, I'm not just yelling and everybody turns around in the house like, you know, like, like, what is wrong with you? You know, now it's, it's somebody else too. It's great. So yeah, it was nice. Um, uh, last thing, last bit, we need to address, uh, the play of Gabamin, Jabaman, Bama, whatever, JPEG. We need to address the play of JPEG and Moise Keen. Mm-hmm. How do we feel? How do we feel? I, I came out of that a lot more optimistic about about those two gents. I don't know about you. Yeah, um, Gabamin looked a lot better. I mean, still ways to go. There, you know, there's t- there was points where you know he was still adjusting, but he clearly had got the memo about go faster, release the ball faster. But um, mm-hmm. he. He didn't have much of an understanding with with Gomez, but it's you know it's the first game together. They're going to have to you know develop that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, improved. I was um. Oh, I was absolutely gutted for Moise Keane not getting one of those two goals. It'd be the first one. He's a bit. He's a bit too excited. He you know he he lets loose when he could carry her a lot further. You know a little bit of lack of composure. But that second one where he does the little turn on the edge of the box and it's, it's like m- this far off. I thought he was off. I'd, yeah. I thought he was outside. I was like, oh, it's not going to count anyway, whatever. So I didn't even pay attention to the fact that it was just bare. And then I was like, wait, they didn't, even raise- they didn't raise the... Are you kidding? You know, it's like, I- then I started really getting gutted for him. Well, I felt really you, you bad for him then. You can see from that move, though, that he's... And this is not a knock on Calvert-Lewin, but he's going to be more of a goal scorer than Calvert-Lewin straight away. Because could you imagine Calvert-Lewin getting himself that little bit of space to get that shot away? Calvert-Lewin with a shield at the ball and fed someone else in, because that's the type of player he is. Whereas um, Keane was like, no, I'm going to turn this player, I'm going to make this bit of space for myself, I'm going to smash it a goal. Just unlucky it didn't go in. So yeah, I think, uh, and I think the managers alluded to this as well, because of the way Keane was at Juventus, he's not going to suddenly you know, change and he's going to be a start every you know game every week. A 90 minute player that's going to have to come gradually. I think we're going to see a lot of them introduced off the bench and into you know mm-hmm. tired defenders and try and, you know, get a feel for the league that way but I think I think we can, we're can. we going to see some goals out of him because he looks like he wants to score he looks like he's he's aggressive in, in the box and you know around, yeah. around the box and I'm just so so gutted he never scored that second chance because honestly a few inches uh, to the right and it's in uh, credit to Cal- Calvert-Lewin though first half he turned his defender ball went across his body Defender, I don't know if it was a penalty. He did get grabbed, went down too easily, to be fair. But he had the defender shook, and he was going to crack a left-footed shot right there. It did seem like he was going to turn the defender and crack a left-footed shot. I will say, kind of annoyed that the referee didn't even look at VAR on that. But he looked on the De La Feo one in the second half Mm -hmm. that Mina supposed and Mina hard. I don't even know if Mina made any contact, but there was contact on Calvert Lewin. Again, for me, probably not either one was a pen. Whatever. But just saying, look, that's what agitates me about this new VAR thing. It's like they're finding new ways for it to look bullshit, and I don't like that. You know, I realize new handball rule is really making oh, it's yeah, it's crap. I got it, but. There's just certain times, I feel like when I watch a German, when I watch Bundesliga, I feel like they just have VAR so, they got it. They got it figured out, you know? So, anyway. So, anything else on the, for the, for this particular match? Uh, No, not really. Good three points. Hope we got to do it again and again and again until the team clicks and then we'll start to expect three points rather than just hope, ideally. Yes. On Bernard, got a goal. Bernard got a goal. Yeah. Unexpected. And we love it. Bring it on, Bernard. More of that. All right. So that's it for our Watford Extra Time segment. Uh, if you've been digging the videos, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. We sincerely appreciate it. Nearing 2,500 subs, and that's beautiful. Thank you for that, really. Uh, if you want more Terry, uh, besides wandering the streets, trying to find him in order for to have a loving embrace. Uh, you can find him at the Liverpool Echo Fan Jury. Check him out there. He drops all kinds of knowledge. I read his last one. 
all right? And I don't know how he managed to sway me on like five different issues, Everton-based, but he did. <laughs> I'm kidding, but I did read it. <laughs> <laughs> just say it uh i read i read all of my um, all of my buddies articles it's kind of awesome their their thoughts are out there in the ether whereas mine stay here where they should be <laughs> uh so uh yeah that's it um we're gonna move on now uh next video will be about formation so stay tuned guess that's it terry see you in a minute all right bye <laughs>